Chris Cavas here at Urine of All 2024, and today we're at the Lockheed Martin stand. We're going to talk to Paul Lemo. He's the Vice President and General Manager of Integrated Warfare Systems and Sensors. Paul, nice to see you again. Great to see you, Chris. Thanks for stopping by our booth today at Urine of All. So, as always, Lockheed has a pretty extensive display here. Prom prominently, you've got several frigates. This is, uh, you know, Lockheed has a big part in all these programs. That's why you're showing the model. But uh, these are two Spanish frigates, and in the middle is a Canadian now destroyer, formerly known as a frigate. So can you tell us a bit about what we're looking at? Yeah, sure. You know, the one closest to us here is the F-100 class uh, frigate for the Spanish Navy, built um, in the 90s, of course, with a standard Aegis weapon system with Spy-1 radars. Uh, these have been in service for many years, uh, great service for the Spanish Navy. In fact, we're getting ready and we're talking to them about a midlife upgrade for those ships. Uh, right next to that, as you said, is the Canadian River Class Destroyer. This is the newest ship uh, that the Canadian Navy is in design on right now and will move into production next year. Uh, their tentative plan is 15 ships, and it's going to be uh, built with um, an Aegis combat system as well but also a SPY-7 radar. Right next to that is the new Spanish F-110 frigate. This is uh, an Aegis combat system based uh, weapon system as well with a SPY-7 radar. And this is in construction. The first two ships are already in construction at Navantia shipyard in north of Spain. So very exciting array of uh, ships here, all with Aegis based combat systems. And uh, two of them have SPY-7 radars. Before we get into the into the Hunter class, let's talk about SPY-7. See, so this is a radar that you developed that hopefully to sell the U.S. Navy. U.S. Navy's not bought it. They're transitioning to uh, the SPY-6 from Atheon's radar, which is now being integrated with your Lockheed Martin right. Aegis combat system. But these these foreign ships, these aren't your only sales, but these are, these are some of the first ships that are going to carry SPY-7. What does that bring to that ship? Yeah. So SPY-7 uh, came along after SPY-6. It's a derivative of the long-range discrimination radar that we built for the U.S. Missile Defense Agency up in Alaska. It's a very large, the, one of the world's largest solid-state radars used for uh, missile defense, essentially, of the U.S., um, but it's also been used for space tracking as well uh, for the Space Defense Agency. Uh, that technology... We basically repackaged. It's the same technology we repackaged into a marinized radar called SPY-7. Um, that was selected for uh, originally what was Aegis Ashore Japan, but then became Aegis System Equipped Vessels. These are two very large ships that are going to house large SPY-7 uh, radars on them for integrated air missile defense. We also offered them, and they were accepted as part of the River Class Destroyer for Canada, and the F-110 for Spain. Those radars are slightly smaller apertures than the ones going on the Japanese ships. Uh, but essentially it's a modern solid state radar that uh, offers the advantages of modularity. You know, one of the neat things about this radar is that it's made up of what we call subarray suites. They're about the size of a shoebox. They're really um, miniature radars. And so you can scale the radar to the needs and the mission space that the ship or land-based uh, uh, mission has, and we could add or subtract the number of subarray suites that we need. Uh, the other feature that it brings is something called polarization diversity, which really uh, allows us to, to put a finer point on discriminating targets, uh, as well as help against uh, you know electronic countermeasures. Uh, this is something that doesn't exist in other radars, so it's a it's a you know it's a feature that we're really proud of as a part of this radar. So those are just a a few of the things I talked about the modularity, you know, the other thing that the modularity brings is that if you have a failure in one of those subarray suites, you can replace that while the radar is still powered on. You don't have to take down the entire radar to replace a subarray suite, which we think is a great maintain while operate feature of the radar. So let's talk, let's, let's move to talk to talk about the uh, Canadian uh, server class. Uh, server class formerly known as the Frigate. It's a derivative of the Type 26 Frigate built in Britain. The VAE Systems is the, is the lead there. Um, similar derivatives are being built in Australia, yeah. the Attacker yeah. class, and this is the Hunter class. Canada just actually retyped these from Frigates just a few weeks ago. 
Now they're officially known as destroyers. destroyers. That's an 8,000 ton ship. It's a very expensive program. It sort of makes sense, but that's, that's an interesting development. It, it is. You know, the way the program was structured by the Canadians is they wanted sort of a lead, you know, uh, designer slash system integrator to work with them on what the ship was going to look like, what the design should be, including the combat system. So, you know, we had originally competed with BAE as our sub. Uh, they were offering the Type 26 design, and that design work was worked through us. Uh, separately, as part of their national shipbuilding program, they had selected Irving as the, the lead yard to produce this ship. Uh, that will all come together now as we enter into the, the manufacturing phase, the production phase of the ships. Irving will take over the prime role. We will become a subcontractor them, as will BAE Systems. We're here talking about the MH-60 Romeo helicopter at this show as well. Right. So this model shows the CH-148 Cyclone helicopter, which is a derivative of Sikorsky's S-92. But the Spanish frigate has an MH-60 Romeo helicopter. This is probably the primary uh, anti-submarine warfare helicopter shipborne for ships to carry worldwide. And right behind us, we've got a nice model of a Romeo. Can you talk about what's going on with that program right now? Sure, yeah. You know, the, the uh, MH-60 Romeo um, demand is significant. You know, in 2022, we recorded an order for an additional 13 aircraft for Australia. So that was their second batch of aircraft. Um, and then in 2023, we recorded an order for eight aircraft for Spain, uh, the MH-60 Romeo, and uh, six for Norway, as well as seven for Greece. So uh, the order book is, is swelling for MH-60 Romeos. We're back in what I would call full-rate production of that aircraft. And, you know, the U.S. Navy obviously continues to operate their fleet and are now looking to upgrades uh, to the mission system on that platform. We've been talking to Paul Lemo, Vice President General Manager, Integrated Warfare Systems and Sensors at Lockheed Martin. Thanks, Thanks. Chris. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.